Just reinstall Windows. That's it. Problem solved. Easiest video ever. Welcome back to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. By now, you could probably tell that this channel focuses mainly on computer hardware, from low budget based PCs to crazy multi CPU workstations. One thing that is universal to every build so far, however, is that they are running on the Windows 10 operating system. And everyone with Windows has encountered the problem where you have a brand new installation and it's lightning fast and responsive, but somehow over time it becomes slower and slower and slower until eventually you even consider buying an entirely new PC. Well, even though that line of thought leads to some pretty sick free gaming PCs, we know that there has to be a way to prevent that crawling Windows experience and even keep your PC running as if it's brand new for forever, or at least until you decide to build a new one. I've seen a lot of videos and articles regarding how to optimize and keep Windows 10 fast and efficient, but they all tended to be somewhat disorganized and clunky, so my goal here is to give you a literal list of things you can go through on an old or even brand new installation of Windows to keep it running buttery smooth. You'll also be able to come back to the list and brush up on your optimization skills instead of having to scrub through random videos to find the answers you need. So without beating around the bush, I'm going to give you three steps in order to help you game better and generally have a more enjoyable time using your PC. Number one, optimize your settings. Number two, reduce clutter. And number three, clean up and maintain. Again, all these steps can be repeated, so be sure to download the PDF in the description for an easy step-by-step -step guide on what I'm going to show you here. So let's jump into OBS with a face cam so I can show you in real time how to configure your system. All right, so let's just dig right in with the three steps and I'm gonna be using my main rig in order to demonstrate this because there are a few settings that I know I haven't adjusted yet. So this guide is useful for an older installation of Windows, but it's also useful for a brand new one and the steps will be the same. So let's start with step one, which is optimizing your Windows. How you'll start here is you'll type in settings in the taskbar or you can navigate to it if you know how to get there otherwise. And you're gonna start off with system. And what I like to do here is start off with the privacy settings. And what we're gonna do is just go from top to bottom. I'm gonna to try to go through this quickly for the sake of of time but you can check out the PDF for more specific information for the general tab you're gonna to want to just turn everything off as you can see all of it is off for location again I turn everything off I do not like sharing my location even though uh, Google tracks it and things like that I don't want Windows doing it so if you do like using location though just take a look at the PDF again there will be a little asterisk letting you know that you don't have to turn it off especially if it's something you're gonna use so that rings true for the rest of the settings that I say to turn everything off so for camera obviously let apps use my camera because I'm using it right now but feel free to turn it off for things like for Facebook I don't use it Microsoft Edge OneNote Skype store wait why Skype turn that back on and maps. And for camera, you can just go ahead and turn everything off. The only one I left it on for is obviously Skype because I use my camera for Skype. Going on to microphone, yes, I want apps to use my microphone. You can turn everything off that's not gonna use it. I left Skype and voice recorder because those both use it. And it might sound crazy to turn it off because it's like, really, is Facebook listening? But who knows, maybe they are. Now for notifications, you can turn this on or off, that's up to you. For speech, you can kind of ignore that. For account info, I leave that on as well because the app store does like to use your picture and name for the app, so I just leave that on. For contacts, I don't use them on my computer, so you can just go ahead and turn those off. So it'll turn it off for everything. Again, calendar, I don't use it, so you can turn it off. Call history, nope. Email, nada. Messaging, uh-uh. Radios, I don't even know what that is. Oh, Bluetooth. Okay, well I do use Bluetooth, but not on this machine, so. All right, sync with devices, uh, I don't have to, but if you do, keep that in mind. Okay, so feedback stuff. This is one that I have left on in the past, but now I know that I'm gonna turn it off to never. I never want Windows to ask me for feedback. I usually just close it out anyway. And then for diagnostic usage, you wanna set it to basic. There's no off. It's going to send some diagnostics to Windows, but I wanna limit that as much as possible. So I set this to basic. And then background apps. This is letting apps run in the background that will consume resources and that will affect your game performance. So you're gonna to wanna to turn off anything that you do not use in the background. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. I left a few things on. I don't even know if I need them, so I'm just gonna leave them just in case to play it safe. Quick note, when you install Windows Update, this may get reverted completely, so it's good to have the PDF in hand so that you can come back to it and reapply some of these settings. I think after a while, you'll get to memorize it, and it will also be helpful for helping out your parents and for friends and family who also need help with this. All right, so that's done. That was just the privacy settings, but those were huge. Those are very important. So what we're gonna do next is make sure, again, all your background applications are off, and we'll get to that in more detail soon. But the next thing we're gonna look at is the system settings. So just right here, click system. So display, that's not really affecting anything, so just go to next apps and features. 
here's where you can start uninstalling some of the apps that you don't use. Um, this is especially useful with a new installation, but I haven't done this yet, so you can follow along with me. Get rid of alarms and clock, I don't use that. Oh, well, see, here's a perfect example. Some of them you can't uninstall. In my opinion, it's not worth going through it, so just leave it. Okay, so that wraps it up. And just in case, if you don't know what something is and you're not sure, Google it. But if you still can't find it easily, just leave it because you don't want to uninstall something that will be a headache to try to find. So just leave the things that you're not sure of. If you are sure you don't need them, just get rid of them. All right, so default apps, you can configure this if you want. That's not really relevant. So for notifications, you can see here that I turned everything off except for these top two. And this is basically letting apps send you notifications through Windows. And of course, you want that to be the case. But again, you can go down and turn off anything that you don't want. So I'm going to do that now. So I wound up leaving most of them on, but yours might be different. For power and sleep, I leave my screen on uh, for at least 30 minutes and then I never go to sleep I never because this is my desktop. If it's a laptop, these are going to be different, but we'll get into more additional power settings soon. We're going to skip storage. Offline maps, what you're going to want to do here is also turn everything off. And what it will do is it'll actually update your maps and you don't want it to do that. Unless, I mean, you use your maps. I don't personally, so you're going to want to turn all this off. Tablet mode, you can kind of ignore. I just turned everything off because this is a desktop. Okay, so for multitasking, this is one that is a matter of preference. This is more like behavior. I keep them all on because the behavior is something that I actually like, like being able to snap windows side to side like this and then do so Hey, look, there's me. So that I leave set to standard. So you can leave all those on if you want as well. I just realized this is probably offside. Projecting to the PC, again, you can leave that all off. Apps for websites, I don't have any. And then about, not really anything important. All right, so that covers that. Okay, so like I mentioned, the next section we're gonna look at is power settings. And this is a really simple one that should actually help a lot. And to get there, I like to hit the start button and then just type in power settings. And you can see power and sleep settings pop up. And then what you're gonna do is go to additional power settings. And then right over here, you can see that there are a couple of options and I just like the preferred plan for high performance. If you want to get more granular, you can click change plan settings and go to advanced power settings right here. And you can actually put in some more specific stuff. But for me, I just set it to the high performance preset and that actually does benefit. You can also do some other cool things like create your own power plan and choose what the power buttons do, but that should cover it for this section. Now for this next section, this is gonna be pretty big because there are a couple things here you're gonna to have to tinker with that are kind of more granular in terms of how Windows works and you don't wanna turn anything off that you're not sure of, but I'm just gonna give you a quick list on the screen of things to turn off, show you where you can turn them off and then we're just gonna move on. And how to get there is you again, hit the Windows button to start typing in services and you'll see this big list of things that run in the background as services. The few that I will highlight just because they're more important are this DMW app push service right here. This is known to be telemetry related. So you're gonna to wanna to turn that off. As you can see, I have it disabled and how you turn it off is you just right click, go to properties and then startup type disabled. A lot of them are manual, which means they're not gonna be turned on unless they're needed. But if you wanna be extra safe, just disable them and then click apply when you're done. So that one, and then another big one is Xbox Live. You can turn off all these Xbox Live services. And then again, take a look at the list here on the screen and also the PDF for some additional things that you can disable if you want. Another thing you can do is turn off Hibernate and that will be in the PDF as well. And the last thing we're gonna do is edit the personalization and how you do that is right click and click on personalize. And here you get to the backgrounds and the themes and all that. And a couple of things that have helped me are the background is kind of whatever you want. Obviously I have this mountain picture. For the colors, just pick a color you want. And then you can turn off some of these theme settings right here. Then for the lock screen, I turn off fun facts. And I also turn off the background picture, but again, that one's optional too. For themes or some advanced settings, but we can skip that for now. Start is another thing that you can change, which I turn off show most used apps and also show recently added apps. I did have those on for a while, but I think as of now, I kind of got sick of that. And now when I hit the start menu, you can see that I just get my installed programs and then the ones that I pin personally and not just the recently used ones. And then the rest I also turned off. And so for this last one, you can apply this to multiple versions of Windows. I think it works for 10, 8, and 7. And what it's gonna do is just limit the amount of animations and other things that Windows will do in order to help increase your performance. And so how you get to that is again, hit your start button and start typing system settings. 
and you'll see advanced system settings. And right here, there's a tab under advanced and system properties. There are other ways to get here, but that's just how I like to do it. You're gonna wanna go to performance under advanced and click settings. And what I do here is I just click adjust for best performance. That turns everything off. Now, I don't actually like it that way, so I'm gonna turn on a couple of things that I like, but again, look into it. It's up to you what you want, but I'll explain some of the things I like, which are, I need to see the window contents while dragging. If not, it just looks really weird, and I'll give you an example of that. If I click apply here, you'll see a bunch of things that aren't very appealing. And one of them is like, look, you can't see what you're dragging. I really don't like that. So I turn on show window contents while dragging. I also smooth the edges of screen fonts. I think that's pretty huge in order to make it anti-aliased and not look really weird. And you can see that right here. These kind of look too thin. And the rest, I think you can just kind of feel out. Those are the two main ones for me. There's a couple of other things I might add as I notice them, but this should make things a little bit more responsive and also make it easier on your system to run the Windows theme in the background. So I click apply, and as you can see, I can drag the screen again, but everything should just be a lot more quick. I was actually just checking to see if this recording went through well, and I noticed that the thumbnail previews are turned off, and that's not one I like, so I'm gonna go in and change that now. I think that's this one right here. Yep. Turn it back on, need to have that, no brainer. Okay, so for the remainder of this screencast, I wanna show you the things now that have been the most helpful for me, especially in the last few years, to keep every installation that I have of Windows blazing fast. So I can't go any further without recommending the software and no, for some reason, if you think it's sponsored, it's not. This is just the best software I found and it's called C Cleaner. And I think it stands for Crap Cleaner. This can basically do the rest of what I'm about to explain, but this has been huge for me, especially in the maintenance of every PC build again that I've ever done. This has been the go-to software. So you can find alternatives to do what I'm about to show you, but this is the one I recommend. So for step two, reducing clutter, what we're gonna start off with is uninstalling any used programs, browser extensions, or background applications, which we kind of touched earlier, but this will help again and just getting rid of anything you don't need. So how you do that is you click on tools and CCleaner and you go to uninstall and here is just a list of programs. Now, the reason why I mentioned that this is for maintenance is because I do this and I do this regularly. So I know that there's actually nothing on here that I don't need, but you're just gonna wanna run through and find a program that you don't want and then click it and then you can click on install. This will also allow you to uninstall some of those apps that the Windows doesn't let you uninstall, but I don't touch those just in case it messes anything up. And for browser plugins, you can just click over here to browser plugins and you can click on Chrome, which is what I use, and you can see everything you use, and you can click through and uninstall any of those. I use all of them, so I don't touch those either. Now, there's a few other features of this application that I don't use, such as Duplicate Finder and System Restore and Drive Wiper, but you can feel free to use those too if they come in handy. Now, this is the biggest thing that has helped me, especially in helping my, old, my friends with their old installations of Windows, computers that are just slow and dragging on. You tend to feel that the most when you first start up your computer. And if you look over here, there's a setting under tools called startup. And when you click on that, you can see that I have most of mine disabled. If I click to sort by enabled, you can see I only have three things turned on and that's because they absolutely need to be on. So when you install something, a lot of the time it will set a entry in your startup list that will force it to run whenever you start something up. And you notice that down in the taskbar when you can see those people, those friends you have with those giant list of items that are just running in the background constantly. I turn literally everything off except for the programs I need. And an example of that right here is Windows Defender. If you're one of those people who likes to have Steam open right when you start up your computer, you could do that as well. I have it disabled, I like to start that on demand, but that is going to be huge. That's gonna make your fast startup times even faster. And this is a good way to keep maintaining. You're gonna to wanna to keep coming back, especially as you install stuff because it can tend to slow down your system when you have too many things starting up at the beginning. Okay, and finally for the last step, which is cleanup, what I'm gonna mention first is obviously physical cleaning. If your system has too much dust, that's going to be a serious issue that can heat up your components, potentially even cause them to die. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that it's clean. I recommend getting some sort of dust cleaner, but you can definitely get the compressed cans of air or you can do what I do and buy a leaf blower from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you're looking for that as well. Okay, so apart from physical cleaning, we're gonna get into the digital stuff, which is right here. This tab on C Cleaner is called Cleaner, which makes sense. And what you can do here is you can click Analyze. and this will show you how much extra data is on your computer that you actually don't need. A lot of it is temporary files. I don't want to close Chrome because I'm using it. But as you can see, there's literally eight gigabytes on here. And a lot of this is caching, which is basically your computer temporarily storing stuff. And you can see most of it is from system temporary files and memory dumps. Don't delete those things if you think you're gonna need them, especially if your computer keeps crashing and stuff and you wanna see what's causing it. You're gonna wanna keep those log files and dumps 
but for me, I don't need any of this, so I'm just gonna run the cleaner. And as you can see, this deleted eight gigs of stuff. That is huge, which brings me to the next point, which is if your hard drive is too big, it will slow down the system because it's gonna take longer for it to have to move around and it's not gonna have as much free space to store things temporarily. So you're gonna wanna clean up your hard drive and if it's too full, you wanna consider even buying another one. Now, these last two things are huge, especially if you're uninstalling a bunch of stuff and you're cleaning constantly, this is huge for maintenance. And number one is going to be registry. And one way that you can clean it up is by using this registry cleaner on CCleaner. I click scan for issues. And this is similar to what you do on the cleaner tab. And if you scroll down, you can see there's just a bunch of random stuff and, and it's clear that it's probably not important. So I click fix selected issues don't want to back up changes. If you're that kind of person, then do it. I haven't done it. I've yet to have any issues. 115 unused stuff. So I click fix all selected issues and what it will do is it delete it. And this has been huge in speeding up my system, which leads to the last point, which is defragging. I have a software on my computer called defraggler and this just replaces the windows one, but you can use the windows one if you want. Warning, do not use this if you have an SSD. SSDs have their own technologies that do this. But if you have a physical disc, which I have a couple of on the system, then you can defrag it, which which basically just rearranges the files so that it's easier to get to for the hard drive. And that should also speed it up. That's one of the oldest tricks in the book. And again, all of these things should be things that you can repeat to keep your system up and running quickly. Well, that about wraps it up. Hopefully you found this video helpful and concise. And if you did, please hit the like button and let me know. Also to leave any questions and thoughts, comment below and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more tech videos like this. The Budget Builds competition will be dropping next week, so look forward to that and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when it's released. Also, a huge thanks for 7,000 subscribers. It's so much more than I deserve. So thanks for continuing to come back and interact with me. Our community has been super helpful and constructive, especially in educating and instructing other people on how to learn and build PCs, and it's been a huge help for me as well. So that's thanks to you all. Um, and that's pretty much everything I have for now. Oh, and. In case you didn't know, I'm Lee from CompTV. Oh, I think you know what this means. This again is another critical part to our new budget PC coming next week. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's good. Got him.